What are the events that will take place when Jesus returns? Is the secret rapture and the seven-year tribulation biblical? How can we be ready for Jesus' soon return? Kindly subscribe to this channel and thank you friends for supporting Truth and Bible Prophecy Media Ministry. Here are the seven events that will happen when Jesus returns. The ultimate realization of God's plan for this earth climaxes with the second coming of Christ. The literal and personal coming of Christ is the point toward which world history moves. The second coming is God's ultimate solution to evil and injustice. It will also mark the beginning of God's eternal kingdom. The promise I will come again in the Bible is given by God who in the past kept all his promises, the greatest of which was to assure humanity that Christ would come the first time. When the fullness of time had come, he faithfully fulfilled his promise. The pre-existent Christ emptied himself of his divine prerogatives and took human form. He then came down to earth as a helpless child to provide salvation for fallen human beings. After his death and resurrection, he went to heaven leaving a clear firm promise that he will come again. This time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Hebrews 9 verse 28 The certainty of the second coming of Christ is ultimately rooted in His first coming. Christians have the firm assurance that Christ's promise to return will come true as completely as the promise of His first coming was fulfilled. While the world is filled with fear, the best is yet to come. Here are the seven end time events that will happen when Jesus returns. Event number one, every eye will see Jesus returns. Revelation 1 verse 7 says, every eye will see him. Every living person will see Jesus when he comes back. I believe even the eyes of the blind will be open to see that event. Every man, woman, and child living in the world will see Jesus at His coming. Both the righteous and the wicked will see Jesus returns. Matthew 24 verse 30 At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He was visible when He left and He will be visible when He comes again. Event number two, it will be the loudest event in mankind. For as the lightning coming out of the east and shine it even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Psalm 50 verse 3, Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. Every ear will hear this trembling sound. Every angel will be blowing the trumpet. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Matthew 24 verse 31. No one will accidentally miss it or be able to read about it in the newspaper the next day. Everyone everywhere will hear it. The Lord shouts with the trumpet blast. It will not be a secret event. Event number three. His coming will open the graves. Jesus' return brings the final answer to the problem of death. Paul assured the Thessalonians for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Christians no longer fear death, for Jesus has triumphed over the last enemy. After bearing the sins of the world, He came forth from the tomb into the glory of eternity. And by His resurrection, we too have confidence. 
What a privilege is ours to stand on the brink of eternity, knowing what the future will bring. Let us look at the coming events previewed for us in the book of Revelation. With Jesus' return in power and majesty, we have seen that the dead in Christ will come to life in the first resurrection and his waiting people will be changed in a moment from mortal to immortal. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 to 52 Listen, I tell you a mystery, we will not all sleep. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will all be changed. Both the resurrected saints and the transformed living saints will be taken together up into the sky to meet Christ like the Hebrew bride going out to meet her husband at the time of their wedding. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth and those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. The righteous ones will finally receive the reward of immortality and there would be a grand reunion when Jesus returns. People that have given their life to Christ and live their life of obedience to Him will only experience a temporary death. Friends, believers don't die. They just go to sleep waiting for the resurrection. That everyone which sees the Son and believeth in Him may have everlasting life and I will raise Him up at the last day. Event number four, His coming will destroy the earth. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly and it shall fall and not rise again. Imagine what the earthquake will do to all man-made structures. It will completely destroy them all. Now if you're among the righteous, you don't have to worry about that because you'll be on your way to meet the Lord in the air. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was that since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. It will truly be a climactic event. This world will be uninhabitable by people after Christ comes. His coming will shake the very foundation of the earth. Revelation 6 verse 14 to 17 which tells us that the wicked will run to the rocks and mountains and pray that they fall on them and hide them from the face of Jesus the Lamb. Sin cannot exist in the presence of a holy God. Either you will be running to the rocks and mountains or you will be ascending into the air to meet Jesus. Behold, this is our God and we have waited for Him. Event number five, great deception will take place. As the Protestant churches reject the clear scriptural arguments in defense of God's law, they will long to silence those whose faith they cannot overthrow by the Bible. They will lift up tradition against truth. They will reject the Ten Commandments and follow the commandments of men. Matthew 10 verse 34, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Protestantism has not only imbibed the wrong day of worship from the papacy, but it has also borrowed the wrong way of interpreting prophecy. They have accepted a false interpretation about the Antichrist. God's last book reveals who is the Antichrist beast. There are really three prophetic schools of interpretation now in conflict. Preterism, Futurism, and Historicism. And each of these schools view the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation differently. Preterist believers point the Antichrist beast is the Roman Emperor Nero, who spearheaded the murder of Christians and Jews in the first century. The Bible does not point to Nero fulfilling any Bible prophecy. Preterism simply proclaims the Antichrist beast is dead. The vast majority of Christian churches today believes that the Antichrist beast is a future Superman or some kind of monster that will appear in the future after the secret rapture. You will not find a single text in the Bible saying that there would be a seven year tribulation they forcefully and incorrectly apply the messianic prophecy of Daniel 9, specifically verse 27. And he shot the covenant with many for one week, 
which is equal to seven years, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. This is not about the Antichrist. It's about Christ. And there is not a hint that supports futurism. Is the rapture and second coming two separate events? According to dispensational eschatology, the second coming of Christ must be divided into events. The secret rapture of the church, which can happen at any moment, followed seven years later by the glorious second coming of Christ to destroy the Antichrist. During these intervening seven years, the great tribulation for the Jewish people, national Israel, will take place. But this is error. This program is not based on responsible biblical exegesis, but it is imposed upon holy scriptures by a preconceived doctrine of the separation of Israel and the church. Then a careful comparison of scripture with scripture should establish the true blessed hope of the people of Christ Jesus and their relation to the final tribulation. As soon as it is determined from holy scripture that the rapture and the glorious appearing are not two separate events, but a single glorious advent, the doctrine of an imminent pre-tribulation rapture is proven to be a defective view and a misdirected hope. The New Testament employs three Greek terms to describe the second advent of Christ. Parousia, which means coming, apocalypsis, revelation, and epiphania, appearing. The parousia of Christ is described in 1 Thessalonians 3.13, 1 Thessalonians 4.15-17, a comparison of these passages makes one thing clear. The parousia of Christ will cause not only the rapture of the church and the resurrection of the righteous dead, but also the destruction of the Antichrist, the lawless one. In 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8, Paul speaks of the splendor of His coming, literally the epiphania of His parousia, thus pointing to the parousia as a dramatic and glorious event. To wait for this glorious appearing of Christ is for the apostle the blessed hope of the truth. We wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing epiphania of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Event number six, Satan and his allies will be destroyed. Revelation 20 verse 10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where both the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The 1,000 years known as the millennium is the period that begins with the second coming of Christ. The book points to the millennium as a real period of time concerning Satan with the fallen angels on one side and God's resurrected people on the other. Satan's triumvirate will meet their doom in the lake of fire and all the people from different ages who sided with him will share the same everlasting punishment. The last attack on the holy city demonstrate the hardness of the hearts within those who rejected God. This scene concludes with the total defeat of Satan and those who followed him. Fire hurled from heaven consumes them. Satan and the fallen angels meet their end in the lake of fire, thus sharing the fate of two other triumvirate members. Revelation 20 verse 10. The text states that they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Every person who has ever lived on earth but spurned God is brought to judgment before the throne of God. People from all time periods and every socio-economic class are there. No one is exempt. All must give an account of the wrongs they committed. The books of records are open. Event number 7. Jesus rewards the faithful. Revelation 22 verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me. The second coming of Jesus will mean final judgment. When Christ comes, the destiny of each person is decided, whether for eternal life or eternal loss. Jesus will give us the crown of life. Having glorified bodies like Christ, we will be one day citizens of heaven and spend eternity with Jesus. The temporal passing pleasure of this life is nothing compared to the eternal life promised by Jesus. Christ is coming soon. Are you ready? Kindly type in the comment section, I will be a citizen of heaven. Kindly share this video and subscribe to this channel. God bless you, faithful one. Be ready for soon return. 
and may we all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.